We're over at Stenhill Fishing Lake in deepest, darkest Devon today, and we're doing a spot of floater fishing. Weather's not been as kind as it could be. It's a bit of breeze. The sun's not out, but the fish are still coming up. And in this quiet little back bay, I found a few fish feeding. And we're into a nice one. Just uh, plowing away to my right here, trying to get around this island. And of course, with floater fishing, you tend to be fishing fairly light. And we will talk about tactics and things later on within this little video. Um, so we're just gonna have to be a little bit careful. Nice forgiving rod. We should be able to we should be able to turn it. And there's the uh, little bolt bobble controller up on the top there. Fish swirling around, powering away. It's very shallow water in this little bay. So the fish can only really go sideways. Oh, lovely common. Looks like a good fish. Not the easiest of uh, swims to land a fish from, but often with floaters, where they're most confident is those little out of the way corners where people don't tend to fish so much. So it can be worth finding those little spots. You can see the nice long hook length there. Hopefully we've got a good hook hold. We won't have any problems. I feel that I'm pinging off the dorsal then. Taking those first couple breaths of air there. Get on a slightly shorter line. And somehow, hopefully, through this somewhat heavy cover. You can slip into the net, excellent. What a great start. Well, we're off the mark on our floater session at Stenhill Fishing Lake in Devon. Got this cracking upper double common. I'm gonna get this one back and talk you through the tactics that I've used to land this cracking fish. We've just put back that cracking upper double common, and now I'm gonna go through the rigs that I use for my day-to-day -day floater fishing. Now, starting with the main line, it's absolutely vital that you've got a main line that stays up on the surface, as a sinking nylon line would pull the rig back towards you. Now, my favorite main line is Aquas. In most open water situations, I use 10 pounds, sometimes stepping up to 12 if I'm fishing close to snags, but I find 10 is about right for most open water applications. Now, it's a nice low diameter line as well, which obviously helps with casting. And moving down the rig from the main line, we have to look at controllers. Now, I used to use traditional sort of 10 pin style controllers quite a bit, but I've moved across to the Fox Bolt Bubbles. Now, they come in a variety of sizes. We've got small, medium, large, and extra large. And I'll go through the various sizes and why I use them and for what application. Starting off with the smallest, these are perfect for fishing at relatively close range. They make very, very little splash when they go in the water. And like all of the bolt bubbles, they can be opened up, filled with water to give you that little bit of extra casting range. So you're not constantly changing controllers to suit the conditions. You can simply add or take out a little bit of water to adjust how much weight. Now, because they sit in the surface, um, as opposed to hanging down, they don't catch any undertow or surface drift, um, unlike a lot of other controllers, which is really, really helpful in providing a good presentation. So for relatively close range, you've got the smaller model. Moving out a bit further, you've got the medium one, which can easily be fished at anything up to around 30 yards. Now there are times beyond this when it can be really hard to actually pick your hook bait out when you're fishing at longer range. And at these times, I move up to either the large or extra large bubble float and actually fish it as a bolt rig. To do this, we fish a short hook length, which I'll come on to uh, in a minute. Um, and by doing this, because the bolt bubble in a larger size has a large flat area at the front of the float, it provides a lot of resistance to a taking fish and obviously provides that bolt effect, which is obviously really useful instead of trying to pick your hook bait out at long range and potentially spooking the fish uh, or missing bites. So we've got a range of floats there to suit uh, different situations. Now, when you actually get the bolt bubble, you don't just get the floats. They actually come in a pack in all sizes with a few little extras. Firstly, you've got a tapered tail rubber on the back of the float. Now that reduces tangles whether you're using a long or short hook length. In fact, it's very, very rare for these to tangle. Got a little box inside the packet as well with a few useful little extras in there. We've got a variety of different size bait bands for those of you that like to uh, mount your hook baits in that way. We've got a couple of swivels that fit perfectly into the nose for a standard semi-fixed effect. And there's also a couple of tapered rig sleeves here that you can put on the swivel, on the front of the float. Again, that will stop the hook length kicking back over on the cast and reduce any tangles. With regards to the actual hook length itself, Fox do a dedicated zig and floater hook length. Now, if I'm fishing 
normally, conventionally, with a longer hook length. I normally aim for the hook length to be about the length and if you put your arms out, like so, I find that about the right length for most floater fishing situations. Now, we do this one in a couple of different breaking strains. There's a nine pound version, which is perfect for smaller fish and open water. And then for those of you that are fishing for bigger fish or in, a, in and around any snags, then we've got the 12 pound version as well. Those of you that are fishing in and around snags as well, another useful little tip. The standard bolt bubble is just mounted in an inline manner like so. So just like you would a standard inline lead. Now those of you that ever use inline leads in snaggy situations will be well aware that you can fish them breakaway style where you actually tie your main line and the hook length to the front swivel. Meaning that if the fish should plow off through any weed or snags, it will just pull free and can drop away, leaving you to land the fish safely. So that's a really, really useful little tip for those of you that are ever fishing in snags. So we've got our hook length, the zig and floater line. Now hooks, hooks are really, really important uh, when you're floater fishing and the right choice can make all the difference. My personal preference is for the SSSP. That's got a nice straight point, which I find gives much better hooking. And I tend to use those in either a size nine or a size 10. Personally, I prefer to use them knotless knot style. I find that the bait sits on the back of the hook absolutely perfectly in that way. The bolt bubbles cover pretty much all floater situations and although I still carry a few different types of uh, controller, I find for most day-to-day -day applications they're absolutely perfect. There's a multitude of baits available for surface fishing for carp, but for most of my floater fishing, I choose to use these floating trout pellets, and they're the perfect loose feed. In their own right, they're quite oily, but as a little extra edge, I use this Richworth blended salmon oil and pour a little bit of that over them before I fire them out with a catapult or feed them by hand. Now, as well as obviously providing extra attraction in forms of flavour in the water, it also causes a slick around the uh, area that you're baiting. Now what this does on a windy day like today, it gives you a nice flat spot, which makes it easy to see where your hook bait is, meaning that you can hit a lot more bites, spot fish coming up to the bait that bit earlier. So a useful little edge. With regards to hook bait, very often you get little fish pecking away at a pellet hook bait and they can often peck it away to nothing. Um, and obviously that can cost you uh, an opportunity. So what I tend to use is a cork ball which just sits on the back of the hook, not this knotted, nice short hair against the back of the hook. And so they match up with the hook bait. Just use a little empty tub like this, put some salmon oil in the bottom, and then just leave my hook baits in there all the time. So they just soak up that flavor, and you've got a real high attract hook bait in the middle of your freebies. Really simple, but highly effective floater baits. I love floater fishing. <laughs> Gonna talk you through the tackle that I use for my floater fishing now. We've got a 12 foot stalker, two and a quarter rod. The reason that I choose this model, two and a quarter, gives me plenty of power for stopping those bigger fish that uh, should we be lucky enough to hook one off the surface, but it's soft enough that we can get away with playing fish with relatively light hook lengths. So this is absolutely perfect rod for this type of fishing. We've got a Strata 7000 reel. It takes more than enough line for floater fishing. It's nice and smooth. And if we are ever using uh, bolt bubbles, for instance, we've still got a free spool facility so that if we put the rod down for a minute, we can make sure it doesn't get pulled in or anything. Lovely smooth clutch as well, which is really, really important when we're playing fish on light hook lengths. So perfect little outfit for floater fishing. Now to carry all our gear around, 
I've got the 12 litre bucket carryall. Now, the reason that I use this is that it gives the space that I need to carry everything, but it's still nice and light for being really, really mobile. In the main front compartment, I've got my medium tackle box with all the terminal gear that I need in there. Within the actual bucket itself, we've got the bait and we've got other things like catapults and in the side we can fit scales and a small camera. Good thing about this as well with the padded top section as well, if we want to sit down for five minutes, we've got somewhere to sit as well. So that's the ideal bag for floater fishing. Now, when we catch a fish, we need somewhere to put it and we've got the Fox Stalker unhooking mat. This is nice and light, foam in the middle, polystyrene balls on the outside so it's a nice light construction which means we haven't got some really big mat that's really heavy to drag around the lake so this really helps us to be mobile and obviously a 42 inch landing net. Now as you can see from all the tackle here there's not piles of it we don't need a barrow full of gear for this type of fishing it's all about mobility being able to move on to the fish and try new swims and I find all of this tackle absolutely perfect for this type of fishing. Well, it's been quite a frustrating afternoon. We had that fish early on. Um, we haven't really been able to get them feeding confidently since. So what we're going to do is take the controller off and try free lining because we've seen a few fish come up right under our feet. And uh, this very traditional tactic can sometimes pay off in this circumstance. Well, sometimes the switch to the most traditional of tactics can pay off. We've taken the controller off the line, gone back to free lining tactics, and we've hooked into a good fish. We're gonna have to go a little bit easy here because the fish is pretty intent on wrapping us around this island. But this is where a nice forgiving rod really, really pays off. Fish is plowing around now. Need to be a little bit careful here. Gonna have to follow the fish because it's uh, Unfortunately going through a gap into the other part of the lake here. Hopefully it's going to have a change of heart. It's interesting when floater fish often play the, uh, the fish with a rod down, much like match anglers pay, uh, play their fish. And they do seem to come back a little bit more easily than when, uh, when you play them with a the rod up. So it might look a little bit unconventional, um, but when you're fishing a little bit lighter, as we often are when we're fishing on the surface for carp, really can pay off, especially when we're in a bit of a tight situation here with uh, some pretty heavy snags to our right and then the island out at not very long range in front. Well, the sun's finally graced us with its presence. And as we come to the end of the day, we've hooked a second fish. It's just coming in towards the net now. Another lovely looking comment. Just guide it in. Simple free line tactics. Nothing but the line and the hook. And it's paid off. Cracking way to end the day. I've only been out a few hours, landed two stunning fish using these simple floater tactics. Get out there and give it a go yourself this summer. See if you can land one as well.